Hey guys, welcome back to yet another video here on the RC Explain channel. Now in today's video, we are going to cover one of the most requested videos for our brushless motor dyno to date. And this video topic was, what is going to be the efficiency difference between using a motor on 2S versus 3S where the only difference is you have the right KV selected so that you get an equal RPM output out of that motor. So that's what we're gonna look at very shortly, but before we get into the video, I do have to announce the winners for the subscriber giveaway that we did and started last week. So the only thing that you had to do to enter this giveaway was obviously be a subscriber, as well as make a comment suggesting your best shirt idea that could be sold on the RC Explained shop. So a lot of great ideas came out from this. I took all the names for those who participated and put them all into the draw. So here are the names that came out from that draw. So your first winner is going to be Love Stricken. Second winner is Air Hammer RC. And the third winner is BBY Auto Graphics. So the three of you need to find my email address on the about page, send me an email. There's th two pieces of information that I will need from you. And that's going to be your shirt size. So the typical North American shirt size. And then the second piece of information that I need from you is what is your color preference for your shirt? We'll also just do a quick verification of your YouTube channel versus the email address that you send through. And then I will collect all the personal information to make sure I ship it to the right person. Uh, yeah, so looking forward to hearing from you three. And let's get on with our video today. So these are the two motors that we are going to test today. One of them is 1050 kV and the other one is 700 kV. And that's quite important because it was really difficult to actually find two motors that have the kV we need in order to have just the right offset versus our 2S and 3S battery packs. Both of these motors will end up outputting 7770 RPM at their nominal voltage. So let's go ahead, throw them on the dyno and see exactly how much power output we get both mechanically from each one of these motors. Well, there you go, guys. You saw exactly how much output power each one of those motors have, as well as how much input power actually went into the system. So now there's a couple interesting points that we can take from this brushless dyno comparison that we made. And the first one is obvious, and that is that the motor with a 700 kV operating on a three cell lithium polymer battery pack actually had the best overall efficiency. Its efficiency was 76.8 versus the other motor coming in at 73.9%. So the actual difference between those two efficiencies is about 2.9%. However, the percentage difference between them is 4%. So that's the results that we see. And there's another interesting thing that I think is worth talking about. And that is the battery pack that we used. Both the battery packs that we used were 2200 milliamp hour. And one of them was a 45C battery pack where the other one was a 35C battery pack. Now to make an absolute perfect comparison, it would be best if both battery packs were the same. Now there's a couple of different ways that I could have done this. I could have done it so that the overall energy of the battery pack is equal for both scenarios. 
or what I could have done is kept the capacity, kept the C rating identical for both battery packs. However, I don't have access to all the same battery packs to make sure all these tests are perfectly aligned. So what I did as a comparison is I tested the exact same scenario out using different parameters where I put two of the packs in parallel and I discharged one just to see what kind of effect we ended up getting. And roughly the numbers were about the same. There was no major overall difference there. So that does tell us and confirm that the results that we're getting for these particular motors are what you see there. So now the next thing that I want to share with you is the same approach, but instead of on the dyno, we're going to go and take it to the whiteboard and go through it on a more theoretical basis. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go through a comparison of motor A, which has a rated KV of 1050, and motor B, which is rated at 700 KV. The whole idea here is to prove out which one is going to be more efficient for us from a theoretical approach. And we're also going to use some data from our dyno result, which is the voltage as well as the current that we're actually operating the motor at. Now, what we have done is we've taken IO and RM as well as even the KV value and determined what the actual specifications are. These do not come from a spec sheet. They are, in fact, the actual measured values. Now, if you want to learn or at least see how we've done that, I'm going to be posting the video that I've come up with to go and measure these values on the Patreon website site as bonus coverage or a behind the scenes look. Come join us on the RC Explained Patreon website. There will be a link in the description below as well as at the very end of the video within the video itself. So we had a voltage of 7.64 with a current of 29.1 amps and we had the IO value of 2.91 amps with an internal motor winding resistance of 30 milliohm. Our KV actually worked out to 1094 relative to the 1050 that the label says that that motor is. And if you go and compute the power output or power input to the motor, this is going to come from voltage multiplied by current and we get 222.46 watts. Now the next thing that we have to do is compute the amount of losses that we get within our system. This way we can actually get the mechanical output that we expect rather than just the power input that we're feeding to the motor. The way that we do this is we calculate our copper losses as well as our iron losses. Now if you don't know exactly how to get to this step, I do have a video that explains these two things in some significant detail that we've done quite some time ago. So just search for that and it will come up. We get 25.41 watts of copper losses for motor A and 22.24 watts of iron losses for motor A. Now what this does is it subtracts right out from the power input. We take our 222, we subtract out our 25 and our 22, and we end up at 175 watts of power out that we get from our motor. Now if we go and take our power out and we divide it by our power in, that's going to be the efficiency of our motor in this case. Case, it's going to be 79% efficient. Now we do the exact same thing for motor B. We have voltage of 1196, current of 22, IO of 2.53. Note that it is smaller than the IO value in motor A, which makes sense. And also that the RM value goes up 0.043 versus a 0.030. And then we have KV coming in a little bit higher than our rated 700, 727, with a power input of 266.07 watts. Now we take that 266, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna have to subtract out our copper and iron losses. We got copper losses of 2151 watts and iron losses of 30.23 watts. This leaves us with a power output of 214.34 watts of output. Now we, all we need to do from here is take this value, divide it by our 266 watts, and we get a total efficiency of 81%. Now there's a couple interesting things from this result. Obviously the first one is, even from a theoretical approach, our 700 kV motor comes out as a more efficient solution from the perspective of power in versus power out. And that is going to be by a difference of 2% from each one of these examples. 
Now there is something that's also more interesting than that from at least what I believe, and that is the RM value. So I've starred the RM values for a specific reason, and that reason is because this is the actual RM value that I measured. However, the motor manufacturer specifies this to be 0.016 relative to the 0.030 that we measured, where in motor B, this manufacturer specifies this to be 0.035 versus the 0.043. Now in this case, the result that I achieved is only 24.2 2% more than what the manufacturer on a spec sheet states. However, in our motor A case, our 16 milliohms versus the 30 milliohms is actually an 87.5% higher value that I have measured versus what the manufacturer states our spec is. Now, if we ended up having more closer to what the manufacturer specifies on this specific motor, we would have a greater and higher efficiency. We would have seen that the copper losses within this motor would have been lower, driving the power out to be higher. But at the end of the day, this is the actual amount of RM that we've measured, which we know must be the most accurate in terms of our specific motor and not just labeled as a generic RM value across every single motor that is sold in this specific rating. So just something that comes up that is quite interesting. To conclude our theoretical analysis, one of the biggest things that a lot of folks would think is that you go to a higher voltage and you should expect higher efficiency. Well, this is a question that often comes up quite frequently. It is a lot easier to get higher amounts of efficiency by using higher voltage. But it's not always the case, and this kind of shows why that is. When you go to a motor within the same size class, your KV, you want to drop that so that you can get the same amount of output RPM just at a different voltage. However, when you do that, you do get the higher voltage, you do get the lower current, but the big thing here is that your RM value is actually going to increase. Now this internal resistance increasing on our motor with a lower KV is exactly what is countering the high efficiency that we expect. Ultimately, what it comes down to is the motor manufacturer building a very efficient motor regardless of whether we're using a higher KV or a lower KV as in our examples. What we want is always the lowest amount of internal resistance. If this motor, relatively speaking, had a higher RM value than it theoretically should, this would contribute to lower amounts of efficiency in this case. This is just something to think about when you're going to a higher voltage in order to get better efficiency. It doesn't always work out this way and it highly depends on what these values are relatively speaking to the other motor that you're comparing in a different KV to be run at a different voltage. Well guys, that pretty well sums it up for this video. I hope you were able to learn something from this specific topic. Now if you have another topic that you want to see on the brushless dyno, let me know in the comment section below. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.